as a content creator, I end up with a lot of content. And it takes a lot of time to create it, so I kind of want to keep it, and I want to keep it safe. And I've got several different ways of storing my data. I've got local storage, I've got external storage, I've got cloud storage, and I do have some NAS storage. But today, I'm going to be building up a dedicated NAS just for my content, just for my YouTube stuff that I create. And I'm going to do that for two reasons. One, obviously to back it up, and two, to have it kind of cloud hosted on my own little personal cloud so I can access it from other places if I need to. And we're going to be using the Synology DS223J. It's one of their budget models. It's still got a lot of features. We'll talk about some of the features and some of the differences between this and some of the more expensive models. We're going to be putting a bunch of data into it and get it all set up and check out the software, check out the hardware, and at the end, have a new home for all my YouTube stuff. So let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be building up this Synology DS223J, which is a two-bay NAS, and like I said, it's one of their budget ones. There's a lot of different models, especially with Synology, a lot of different models as far as how many bays they have, what kind of processor they have, how much RAM they have, what the capabilities are, and for what I'm doing, I really just need to back up a bunch of data. And for that purpose, this 223J is going to be just fine. They do make a 223 without the J, and it's got a little bit more RAM, it can handle more users at the same time. If you're going to be streaming a bunch of stuff off of it, it's probably a good idea to get that one. It's a little bit higher quality, but for what I need, this J version is going to be just fine. And if you need to just store data, just back up pictures, photos, you know, home movies, that kind of stuff, then that's going to be just fine too. If you want to build up a little Plex server, this is going to do that just fine. If you're going to have 10 people streaming off of it in your house, then you probably want to get a little different model. So we're starting with this 223J. I've got with me two 12 terabyte drives. These are HGST drives. And these particular ones here are renewed drives. And you can get these things on Amazon renewed, which means they were probably in a data center somewhere holding some data. They use them for a year, a couple of years or whatever. And then they erase them all out, sell them at a highly discounted rate. And these things are less than $10 a terabyte which is a crazy value, and I'm going to be setting these up in RAID 1, which means everything's going to be mirrored. So the end result is I'll have about 12 terabytes of storage, and if one of the drive fails, then I just pop it out, pop in a new one, and that mirror is going to recreate itself and everything will be safe. So the only catastrophic thing would happen if both drives happen to fail exactly at the same time. If you feel better using brand new drives, I completely understand. I'll have links to these and to some other recommendations for NAS drives down in the description below. But for what I need, I think these are gonna work out great. So our first step is gonna be opening up the Synology, putting the two drives in, and getting it powered up. So let's open this up and take a look inside first. All right, so they've made this pretty easy to get into. In fact, it ships with the screws taken out of it already because they know you're not gonna do anything with it until you get some drives in it. So looking at it from behind, if you just lay it down on its side to the left, you're just gonna push this door kind of forward and then lift it right off and that's it. So this is just empty plastic shell to complete the case and then all the guts, if you will, are in here. So we've got two SATA drive bays with the two connectors here and the way they've got it set up is if your drives have three holes on them then you can install them just like this. If your drives only have two holes, one here and then one about right here, then they have a bracket that's included in that you just screw down here. It gives you a little riser and gives you another place to put that second screw. Now I believe the drives I got have the three holes in them, so I think I'm gonna be able to slide them in. Just put two screws on either side and then it'll be good to go. And in the package besides the drive bay, it has the power supply of course, and then it's got all the screws you need. Screws for the hard drives, screws for the bracket if you need that, and then screws to put the thing back together once you get the drives in. So let me open up my drives, get them in place, and start putting some screws into them. All right, so I got my drives opened up, and they are the three-hole versions, so they should be just fine without the extra bracket. And it looks like the first one's just going to lay down, and there is some little rubber right here that's going to give it some insulation from the bottom here, and a little rubber on the screw holes here to give it some dampening, hopefully to keep it a little bit more quiet. So I'm just going to take this first guy here and lay it down, 
and slide it back and push it all the way in. So it went in pretty easily. And I'm going to take the second one and lay it up on these brackets, which are coated with rubber also. And do the same thing. Just lay it on there. There was a little bit of friction from that rubber. And just push it back. And there it goes. Mates right up. So let's get a couple screws in here. I'm using my trusty Strabido screwdriver because it's got a magnetic tip and I'm not going to lose one of these screws down in the guts of this thing here. And I'm using a Phillips 2 tip here. A 1 would work also, but the 2 keeps it nice and steady. Let's go ahead and put these screws in and I'll be right back. All right, and I got all the screws in, put two in on each side of the drive, and they're very sturdy now. So now I'm just gonna take the, the lid or the side, put it back on here, a little offset again from how it started, and then I should just be able to slide that forward nice and easy. And I'll go grab the two screws for the back and get this thing closed up. And just as a helpful hint, this is the bracket that I said that you could mount on there and it screws down to the bottom and then gives you two more mounting locations. And it came with three screws to put this down, you know, to mount it down inside there. And then it comes with three screws to hold this plastic case together. And you only need two, but I guess they give you three just in case you lose one. And they're not labeled, but you can tell the difference between the screws that you need because the ones for the plastic case are a little bit coarser thread. So make sure you use the coarser thread ones for this, the finer thread ones for this if you need it, and it does come with enough extra screws to use these holes here. So let me go ahead and put these screws into the case, get it all set up, and then we can power it up. All right, so I got those screws in, and these are just going into plastic, so make sure you don't torque them down too much. Just get them in there snug enough that this case isn't going anywhere. So now, We've got it all assembled, and it is definitely a lot heavier now because we got those two drives in there. Before, it was all just basically empty plastic, and it felt a little, a little cheapy just because it's empty. But now that it's got the drives in there, this thing is not going to fall over. So it is ready to go. Next step, we're going to power it up, and I think we need to install the latest version of the software on here. It has instructions for how to hook up to it with a computer and make sure that we flash this thing with the newest version of their DSM software, which is what you use to configure it with your computer. So let me get it powered up and hooked up to a computer, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've plugged the NAS station into power, and I've also plugged it into my switch. So it does come with a short Ethernet cable, but if you need a longer one, you may need to grab that. So yes, you do have to use a switch. You can't just use this thing wirelessly. But this computer that you're looking at right here is on the same network as that NAS. And the instructions say just to go to point your web browser to find.synology.com. And it looks on your network and it finds any Synology devices that are on there. So pay no attention to this one here that says not available. That's another device that I've used in the past. It's not powered on right now. But this one right here is what it found. So Synology NAS, it's assigned it an IP address, of course, because it's on my network and it shows that it's the DS223J, and it says not installed. That means that the software hasn't been installed yet, so we're going to go ahead and click connect, read through the end user agreement. Yep, agree with all that. And it's ready to set up the DS223J. So let's hit install, and it's going to automatically download and install the latest DSM from the internet, so it's gonna find it on the website. If you had it downloaded, I guess you could do that, but we're just gonna do the automatically download. And this is the point where it says, hey, if you put some hard drives in here that had data on them, they're not gonna be on there anymore. It's gonna delete everything off of those drives. So these were brand new, or at least they were new to me, so I'm gonna say okay. And to confirm, I guess it's just making you type something in so that you don't accidentally click okay to delete it so let's type in ds223j 
and hit delete. And now it's going to download and install Disk Station Manager. And once that's done, it says it's going to restart. It looks like it's counting down from 10 minutes. And it says do not turn off. So I'll go ahead and let this do this thing. And I'll be back in 10 minutes. All right, and it looks like it's all installed. So let's go ahead and click start. And it wants us to set up the drive with a device name, administrator account, and password. So let me set that up, and I'll be right back. All right, let's continue to set this thing up. I'm going to leave this recommended here as automatically install important DSM and package updates only. And it says we can create a Synology account. I'm going to go ahead and skip that for now and maybe make that later. We'll go ahead and I'll let these analytics be sent to the developers. And I'll hit remind me later on the photos. I'm not worried about photos right now. I'm going to skip the extended warranty for now. And I'm going to skip the two. Uh oh, where'd we go? I guess I'll do this again. <laughs> I'll hit remind me later for the photos. Skip the warranty. Remind me later for the two factor. And we'll do this later. So the first thing it wants us to do is create a storage pool and volume. So this is where we're going to be able to store our stuff. In, the, in my case, all the videos and the files that I use for making my videos. So let's go ahead and hit Create Now. So it should find the drives that I put in there. Let's hit Start. And we've got some options on RAID type. I'm going to select RAID 1. So it needs a minimum of two drives. And it is mirrored, and it's going to provide fault tolerance in case of drive failure. So that sounds good to me. And I have to select at least two drives to create that RAID 1. So we've got two drives in there. We're going to use those. And it says these drives aren't on the compatibility list. And I know Synology does sell their own drives now, so I'm sure they want to push you that way. But I'm going to just ignore this for now and hit continue. And since I did get these as renewed. I'm going to go ahead and perform the drive check. It's going to take a little bit longer, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. And it shows my total capacity being just over 11 gigabytes. Some of the storage on these does get used up by installing that DSM. It installs that on both the drives. And I'm not going to give the volume a description now because I'm just going to have one volume on this. And I'm going to hit max on the allocation size. So I guess you could have multiple volumes in the storage pool if you wanted. I'm just going to have one big one. And now it's given us two choices for the file system. The ext4 is going to give you compatibility in case you ever have to take these drives out. But the BT RFS is the recommended one. And that's going to give you some extra features uh, like the snapshots and stuff. So I'm going to stick with that. And it's all ready to go. Let's hit apply. Yep. Erase it all. So I'm going to let this do its thing. And I'll be back when it's all set up. And I can see now why the disk check was not the default choice because it is saying the time left to perform this drive check is 13 hours and 30 minutes. I guess I'm in it for the long run, so let me come back later. All right, so here we are on the next day, and that did take exactly as long as it said it was going to take. But now we have our two drives set up here, and they are fully checked. Everything says that it's healthy, and this is in the storage manager. So all we've done is we've created this storage pool with this first volume, and now we need to have an actual place to put our stuff. So we're going to create a folder. So let's look in the main menu here, see if we can figure out where to go. Let's try the file station. And the file station says that there's no shared folder available, so you'll need to create a shared folder. So we're going to do that. And I'm just going to name this folder videos. I'm going to select the only volume that I've got here. And I don't have any other users, so I'm just going to keep this defaulted to restrict the address access to the administrators. So let's hit next. And we can either encrypt it or not. I'm not worried about that right now, so we'll just hit skip. Then we got some more questions about data checksum for advanced data integrity and a folder quota. I'm not going to worry about either of those right now. And it says it's all ready to create, so we'll hit next. And here we are. We're all set up. So now I've got my file station here. shows that I've got a videos folder underneath my NAS. So I should be ready to start dragging some stuff in there. So let me close up this storage manager just to clean things up. Now I've got my file manager here and I'm in my videos folder and there's nothing in there except for the recycle bin. So let me go find a folder to drag in here and we'll test out by dragging just one or two videos just to test. 
So I'm only capturing the window, so you won't be able to see me drag from another window, but you will see this right here, where I've got something that I'm hovering over here, and it says drop files. So I'm going to let go of that. So it's asking what should it do if it finds another file with that same file name, and you can either overwrite or skip, and you can select the always. I'm just going to hit overwrite because I know there's nothing there. And now we've got our upload queue up here. We can click on that to see the progress. And that file is 1.53 gigabytes large, and it's done, and there it is. So my videos usually range anywhere from 1 to 5 or 1 to 8 gigabytes each. So let's just say on an average 5 gigabytes, and I've got 10 terabytes essentially to work with. So that's about 2,000 files that I can drag on here. So that's going to be several years worth of videos for me, and they'll always be here. I'll be able to access this from anywhere. There's an iPhone app that you can access your files from, or you can just grab it in any web browser, log into your NAS, and get to your stuff. So I think that was pretty easy to put together, pretty easy to set up, pretty easy to use. And it gives me the peace of mind that all my stuff is going to be stored in several different places, just in case. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Just wanted to put together a NAS station for you using that Synology DS223J. Threw a couple hard drives in there, set up the software, and get it all ready to go. Now there's lots of other stuff in the package center. This is where you'd find some of the other applications for saving photos and videos and having a media server, having a Plex server, all just single click installs pretty much, set something up like there's the Plex server and lots of different things that you can do with this. I'm just using it as a file backup server, but you can actually use it for like an actual operating system backup server and have your Mac and Windows PCs back up their stuff to this automatically, but I'm just going to use it in this manual fashion. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate if you click that like button. Check out the rest of the channel, see if there's something else there worth subscribing for. But I thank you for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.